Light the candle, tiger! Hi there, a warm welcome to the Racing Post Golf Postcast. Bruce Millington, Steve Palmer and Star Sports Glenn Day looking back on a momentous US Open and looking ahead to this week's tournaments, two absolute crackers. So before we get who the boys fancy coming up, let's look back at the US Open. Gary Woodland, I guess the headline there, Glenn, is that he saved the industry in absolute hiding, didn't he? Yeah, obviously a uh, good result in the end. Uh, plenty of business pre-tournament on all the uh, leading fancies. Um, as the tournament's progressing, Rose and Keck are very, very popular, especially on Sunday. So people didn't really want to know Woodland. Um, yeah, so very good result for us. I mean, Woodland, uh, it just seems to have been a bit of a nearly man, doesn't he, Glenn? I suppose at 35, you know, a lot of people who... He comes onto the scene and people want to back him and back him, and then they kind of desert him after too many disappointments. Is he? Well, that's kind of his profile, wasn't it? Yeah, definitely. I agree. I'll just say, stay there. He's, he's inconsistent. Um, I backed him in the PGA last year. Uh, he played well. He placed um, second to Roy McIlroy in a match play. So he's got form there against you know the, the big players, but just inconsistency when he's on his game. Very good, as he proved on Sunday. Steve, if they were, if you were uh, awarding the trophy on the nicest golfer, Gary Woodland would have been one of the favourites. He seems a really nice chap, doesn't he? Yeah, absolutely. No, I think everyone was uh, pleased for him, wasn't they? He's very popular with his peers and uh, understandable why he's had a few troubles in his personal life. And uh, obviously, we've got the story of uh, little Amy. I mean, he was wonderful with little Amy, uh, the, the, the Down syndrome girl at the Phoenix Open. And that story has snowballed now. I think it actually inspired Woodland um, in, in, in the US Open because he said when he was over those putts, he was saying to himself, I got this, I got this. In his head, he was saying, I got this, I got this, which was obviously the famous catchphrase of uh, of Amy. So, uh, yeah, I was really pleased for Woodland. You know, it was a brutal week, 3, 3 a.m. finishes. The betting, uh, obviously, I didn't back Woodland, so um, I had no betting joy. But, yeah, I, I was pleased for the man. Yes, indeed. Um, in terms of the tips, if you look back now, what 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 would your sort of uh, view be? What would you like to have known at the end of the tournament before the start, apart from the fact that Gary Woodland would have won it? Did the well, course play as expected? Uh, well, as for Woodland, there was a few clues there. I mean, he had some decent West Coast form. Uh, his recent uh, spins at Pebble, he had a couple of decent rounds there. Um, but just it was difficult to see him scrambling well enough around the small greens. Um, you know, traditionally a very poor putter and a very poor short game. And, you know, he really turned it around. He, he gained 8.2 strokes Gain putting last week on the field. I mean, his, his, his putting coach, Phil Kenyon, has got to take a lot of credit. You know, Woodland has um, you know, had this weakness for his entire career and then all of a sudden he's had this surge of, of short game form. I mean, you know, I, I backed Woodland in the Florida swing a couple of times in the Florida swing at the start of the year and uh, he putted like an elephant. You know, it's, it's only very recently that it's, uh, it's, it's come around. So, um, yeah, Woodland was, was gettable, but uh, no, you know, not, 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 not on my radar. And, um, yeah, as for the course, played a lot easier than we you know, we anticipated uh, i thought the usga would be quite uh, you know lenient with after what happened at shinnecock hills last year but i think they went too far i don't know how you got boys feel on it but um didn't feel like a us open to me the, you know, the balls were spinning into the greens throughout the throughout the week uh, because they were they were watering the greens every every day i um yeah, I was a bit disappointed. It felt like a lot like a regulation us tour event to me yeah any joy on the punting glenn or was it carnage no, personally, no. Yeah. I mean, I just put up the three. I stuck with him. So, as Steve said, uh, Chopin sneaking in the frame with a good last round, uh, even week. So, I can't complain. And Steve, any joy at all? Yeah, yeah, we both had Shefalia, didn't we? Yeah, Xander Shefalia got uh, a full place payout, finished third. So, um, yeah, 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 keeps us well in the game, that. I, I had a big uh, match bet, Chopin against Ram. Uh, Chopin parred the last. Ram birded it, dead heat. <clears throat> Never mind. It was a good yes. tournament, though. I enjoyed it. It was a great tournament. I just don't like those late finishes, Steve. They're very attritional, aren't they? And I should think a 3 a.m. finish when you've got a, a newborn tot must make life very difficult, doesn't it? Yeah, I did find it very traumatic. I, I, I made it through to every one, but the, the following days were um, just a blur, really. I mean, you know, Margaret Thatcher always used to go on about having four hours sleep, didn't she, when she was Prime Minister? That's all she needed. But I don't know what was in her, in her constitution because um, four hours sleep's not enough. Well, they called her the Iron Lady, didn't they? Uh, any players to take out? Anyone who sort of bubbled under the leaderboard and you thought, hmm, I'm going to have him on my radar? Glenn? Yeah, definitely. Um, a guy that uh, Steve put up a couple of weeks ago in Canada, actually, Danny Willett. Uh, very impressive this week. Uh, good third round, level par in the last round. Just everything seems to be coming back together for him. 
Um, he's obviously in a better place again. I would say he's a player that looks like he's ready to win. Excellent. Steve, so, what have you got for me? Well, I know he disappointed you on that final hole, but I think you should not have any downers on Shafele. His major performances are just inc- so consistent. He's, for one so young, the way he performs, he's only 25, the way he performs in majors is 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 is, is incredible. And uh, I think the tougher the major venues get, the more chance he's got. And he's, he's massively on the radar for Port Rush. But also, Steve, he seems to be effective at any layout, doesn't he? I mean, you know, some of the guys who are good at the tough ones aren't so good when it's just a, a smash it down the middle. And, uh, and, but it, yeah. all courses seem, seem doable to him, don't they? Well, yeah, I mean, he shot a 61 to win the Hyundai Tournament of Champions at the start of the year, didn't he? So, yeah, very versatile player. And um, I just love his temperament. You know, he, he, I, I think you described him as quite dull, didn't you, in, in, in your column the other way. I thought it was a, a, a tad harsh. Robotic, I, think, I, I think, said. <laughs> Robotic. I think. I think he's. Um, I think he's a decent character, and I think. Um, yeah, he, he, he's. He's a top five player in the world. Okay, let's move on to this week, and we will start with the American tournament, which is the Travelers Championship, taking place in Cromwell, Connecticut, at TPC River Highlands. And before the lads tell us who they like, Glenn, spin through Star Sports' latest betting. Yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, we're fifty odds for six places this week. Uh, Brooks Koepka, fifteen to two favourite. 10 to 1 Patrick Cantlay, 16 is Jordan Spieth, 18 to 1 Molinari, Justin Thomas and Paul Casey, 20 to 1 Jason Day, the 25 Bryson DeChambeau and Bubba Watson, and 30 to 1 Mark Leishman and Tommy Fleetwood. And what's the tournament rating, Glenn? The rating this week comes out at an 8. An Very eight. solid. Very yep. good. Steve, what sort of golfer will thrive this week, do you think? TBC River Highlands, 6,841 yards. A very short course by modern standards. It used to be ridiculously easy. Kenny Perry, one of your old favourites, Bruce. Kenny Perry once carded a 22 under par score in 1999. It's a bit tougher these days. It was revised in 2015, but it's still a birdie fest. So, uh, yeah, tidy golf. Tidy golf uh, from tee to green. Then a hot putter are the, the keys to success. OK, and Steve, who will end up victorious in your opinion? I can't leave Patrick Cartley out of the staking plan. I think uh, I think Cartley's the man to be on this week. He, uh, very, very sweet on him. His first round 73 last week in the US Open. It was disappointing. We were on him last week. He was slow out of the traps. He, he dropped eight shots behind after round one, but he fought his way back to finish in 21st place. He was never in contention, so it's not a major which took a lot, a lot out of him mentally. I think he tees up this week fresh and focused. Uh, this is a player who... Um, Lost almost three years to injury. He's only got two US Tour titles in his locker, so there's no resting on his laurels for Cantley. He won the Memorial at the start of this month, but he's hungry for further success. He played well the week after the Masters. Uh, he finished third in the Heritage the week after the Masters, so there's no... I don't expect any post-major hangover from Cantley. The quality of that Memorial performance can't be overplayed. The final round 64 was close to golf in perfection. Uh, this is a former world number one amateur. I think he'd be threatening for the world number one professional spot uh, in the months ahead, he's ludicrously consistent. He's become weakness free. And uh, as for his course credentials, he carded a second round 60 on this track as an amateur in, in the 2011 Travelers. Uh, last year, he was 15th. I mean, it, he loves Pete Dye tracks. Yeah, he, I, I, I can't get away from Cartley. You can't get away from Cartley. Um, Glenn, what's your main selection? I mean, very, very boring and go for the three time champion, Bubba Watson. Uh, returning to the track where he gained his first victory. Uh, he's shown over his career that he, he's courses that he's comfortable and he goes back and performs well again. Uh, two-time winner at Augusta National, 2012-14 and a fifth place in 2018. He's won three times at Riviera Country Club, 2014, 16 and 18. And here at River Island, 12 outings, three times a winner, 2010, 2015, and last year, and he's also finished second, fourth, and sixth. Uh, Riviera and River Highlands both not very long. Uh, Bubba Watson, I think, is able to overpower them. Uh, since 2008 here, he is ranked in the top two in driving distance. Quite a stat. On no fewer than nine occasions. Seventh in greens in regulation last year. Top six in scrambling on three occasions. And perhaps most importantly, he's five times ranked in the top 10 in putts for greens in regulation. His gameplay, gameplay here appears quite simple. Smash it down there. He averages over 307 yards off the tee since 2008. And then when he gets there, relies on his touch around and on the greens. 
Um, he's turning up in not particularly good form, but I don't see that as a reason for alarm. As the three occasions he won, he came here in similar form. In 2010, leading in, his form figures were 22, missed cut 33. In 2015, group stage and a match play, 42nd, missed cut. And last year, 57th, 44th, missed cut. I just think something about Connecticut and River Highlands that sparks Bummer into life. And I expect him to do so again this week. Well, that's a strong case there, Glenn. Uh, 33 to 1 is out there. Obviously, Star Sports are shorter because Glenn fancies them and he wants to duck Bubba. Um, Steve, just I've got in my head that Bubba is a banger and, and therefore courses where the onus is on accuracy shouldn't really suit him. What's the situation? Is it just that maybe when his driver is, is behaving, he can actually take the chief out of the bag when others are going with three wood? Or, you know, how, how does that correlate a big, powerful hitter like Bubba Watson at a fiddly track like this? Well, he hits a nice cut, doesn't he? He's got the nice left to right shape on his on his drive, so they'll stop quickly and they'll be controlled. And it's often very soft at this course, and this week is particularly soft. We must must mention how much rain there's been in the build-up, uh, and there's a little bit more rain forecast. So very, very soft conditions, and, and Bubble will relish that. I'm very, very pleased Glenn has tipped uh, Bubble Watson, because if I was going to have one more, it would definitely be be Bubba. Uh, you've got to respect that course record. But you're only going with two this week, so as well as Cantlay, who's the other selection? I'm only going with two because I want a, a big stake on, can't they? And uh, the, the and next best... And the entire field in the European tournament as well. Uh, <laughs> we got seven in that one. We got two. It's the first time I've ever tipped seven. I should but, think yeah, so too. A, seven? A, 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 well, a to they're all massive prices. All at massive prices. We've got a total of nine tips. Nine tips this okay. week. So um, typically you'd have... You know, five in each, and you have ten. So that's right, mate. That's fine. F fewer players this week. Uh, so the next best is Daniel Berger. Daniel Berger, another cocksure American youngster. Like Cantlay, he's got two US Tour wins on the board, and like Cantlay, he's uh, suffered some injury setbacks. He, he, not quite as severe as Cantlay, but he needed five months off uh, with a thumb injury at the end of last year. He's slowly but surely built up fitness and form and confidence since returning in January. He's made seven cuts in a row. And the Travellers is his best opportunity of the season to, to contend. He's finished fifth on his TPC River Highlands debut. Uh, then he got beaten by Jordan Spieth in a playoff the following year. You must remember that tournament, Bruce. Spieth hold a bunker shot and went bananas in the bunker. Uh, poor old Daniel Berger on the, on the green there and uh, was beaten in a playoff. Berger's got a great record in um, other par 70s, which are similar to TPC River Highlands. His, his two US Tour titles came in the par 70 TPC uh, Southwind. And, uh, yeah, I think his, his course credentials mean uh, Berger will make the step up from playing good golf. He's playing good golf at the moment. I think he loves this course so much he'll play great golf this week. And he's a big prize. Righty-ho. And, Glenn, apart from Bubba, who else are you going to put up? Um, my second pick, another player, very comfortable at River Highlands, uh, Paul Casey. Uh, also, he seems very comfortable in life in general at the moment. Birth of his child and the marriage to his second wife. He seems in a very good place. His demeanour on and off the course uh, reflect this, and it's reflected in his uh, results this year. A win where he achieved a lifelong ambition of defending the title at the Vale Spa. The two second place finishes, a third, a fourth, and a ninth, all amount to a very solid season. A strong finish in the final round on Sunday for a 21st place finish at Pebble. Set him up very nicely for a tournament where his form figures are 2nd, 17th, 5th and 2nd. Unfortunately, he's going to bump into his old foe, Baba, who he finished second to on two occasions. And in 2017, here he led the field in driving accuracy, which obviously will come into play this week. He's had three top five greens in regulations, 2016 second in scrambling, 2017 seventh in putts per round. So far this year, in these tournaments, he's ranked seventh, ranked top seven, sorry, in overall stats. He's twice in the top ten in driving distance, four times top ten in driving accuracy, four times top five greens in regulation. Uh, appears highly in the scrambling stats, cuts for greens in regulation. Everything says Paul Casey's game is in full working order. I know, so have a good show this weekend. Lovely stuff. Are you, like Steve, just sticking with two, or is there anyone else, Glenn? I've got a couple I'd just like to mention. Just to, I will throw them into the staking pan as well, but not going to go mad. Uh, ben Ann, uh, a guy that I, I put him up a few years ago as a player to watch, and within a month he won the BMW uh, Wentworth, so that sort of went out the window. Um, Plies his trade in, um, in the States at the moment. 
He had a really good first round in the players. I backed him that week. I couldn't see it through, but signs that his game was coming back together. Finished 16th last week in the US Open, and I think if he puts it all in, he could put in a good show this week. Uh, the price is available is about 66 to 1. Uh, I'll take a chance on him. And another guy who's got good calls for Ryan Moore, five top 10s, seven top 20s. Again, he doesn't come here in great form. Uh, showed a bit in the Texas Open, first in driving accuracy and third in greens in regulations. Showed it again. There's something there. He's coming back. Um, plays well around here, and hopefully this will spark him into life as well. So uh, four in the staking plan for me this week. Isn't Ryan Moore one of those guys who's just got a bit of a leaderboard allergy when it comes to the weekend? He's sort of always thereabouts, but then he, he'll he'll fall off and get a nice check without ever really competing. He's won a few times, hasn't he? No, Has he? he did get Pitched by famously by McElroy in the uh, in the FedEx Cup a few years ago. Fair uh, enough. All right then. Through. You know more about it than I do. We're going to spin through the, the other market leaders and just get a view on them. Steve Kupka, a single digit priced favourite. Why should we not be backing him? Well, surely the US Open sucked a bit of mental energy from him. That was a huge Sunday effort. A very poor back nine and, and ultimately a massive disappointment. He played in Canada as well. He played the Canadian Open prior to the US Open. So I think the tank may be empty. And obviously in regulation US Tour events, you know, his, his motivation has never been strong at the best of times. Okie dokes. Uh, what about Jordan Spieth, uh, Glenn? Um, again, it's just not quite on it. I mean, he's, he's repeatedly shown signs of coming back to form last week. There are plenty of birdies, but plenty of bogeys as well. Um, He's just, his game isn't where it should be. Um, again, at the prices, he's third in in the market. It's not for me, not at the moment. Justin Thomas seems a bit out of form, Steve. Yeah, missed the cut on his return at the Memorial. Missed the cut in the US Open last week. I think he's finding it harder to um, harder than he expected to recover his form after injury. Um, so, yeah, I need, I need to see a bit more from him before I start backing him again. I think this is a good chance for Spieth. Um, you know, it, it, this is a key week for Spieth because, um, you know, this is an easy setup. You know, he's putting well and he's won here, you know, won here a couple of years ago. There's no excuses for Spieth this week. So it's a key indicator this week of, of, the, of the future months ahead for Spieth. OK, and finally, uh, Glenn, Francesco Molinari. Is this his sort of gaff? Yeah, definitely. I would say, yeah. Uh, uh, accuracy being a, a key trait needed here. That's how he's going. But again, um, for me, last few months, he's not quite been on his game as he was last year. He had a fantastic run for 18 months. Um, yeah, something not quite there. Uh, again, at the price, is not really for me this week. But, right. Yeah, you know, still part of a good show. OK, thanks, chaps. Let's look at the BMW International, which takes place at... Uh, oh, it's not... It used to be at somewhere called Gut Garden or something, didn't it? Anyway, it's... it's Good That's it. Golf Club München. I can fried. Anyway, it's in Germany. Starts on Thursday, so get your bets placed before you go to bed tonight. Tonight being Wednesday. And Glenn, take us through the front runners. Yeah, again, we're uh, 50 odds first six places in this tournament. Uh, defending champion Matt Wallace, 11 1 favourite. 12 to 1 Sergio Garcia. 14 to 1 Kaima and Fitzpatrick. And on 25, Juice Luton, Cabrera Bayo, and Thomas Detry. And 28 to 1, Bern Wiesberger, Jordan Smith, and Julian Suri. Okay, at uh, long last, we've got a decent, uh, we've got a decent European Tour event. There's been some right old dross this year, but there's a decent uh, field assembled for this one. And Steve, you've put up about half of them, so you're going to have to be slightly less uh, exp expansive with your cases. But give us your main man first. Uh, main man is Thomas Detry, super talented young Belgian, settled nicely on the European Tour after taking the Challenge Tour by storm. Uh, and in his rookie season on the European Tour, he dropped a huge hint that uh, his maiden title may come at uh, Nord Eichen Ride. Uh, in, in 2017, his form figures prior to the BMW International were miscut 48, 65, miscut, miscut. And his form figures after the BMW International were miscut 48, miscut. So he's on a terrible run. Zero confidence, but in the BMW, he finished second. He closed with a 66 and lost by a shot. So Detry is so well suited to Nord Eichen ride, he was able to throw the form book out the window and make merry. Two years, two years later, self-belief has risen massively. He won the World Cup alongside Thomas Peters in November. He's been on leaderboards in Qatar, Morocco, in the British Masters recently. And last time out, nine under par for 63 holes in the Belgium knockout, made the last 16 there. His form figures in Germany are 237, 918 and 13. 
it's a short hop from his Brussels home. So, yeah, Detri, Detri main bet. Um, Steve, I'm interested there because uh, as with uh, Glenn's main tip in America, Bubba Watson, the key there is about the course form. Just very quickly, chaps, I want to ask you, what's more important, course form or current form? Steve? Current form by a long way. By a long way? Yeah, yeah, current, current for, yeah. If you're playing well, you can win anywhere. I mean, we saw Rory McIlroy on a course it didn't particularly suit uh, last week, and uh, you know he, he played well and threatened to win that. So uh, yeah, course form you always got to take into account course form, but current form is, is miles more important. Do you agree with that, Glenn? Yeah, hundred percent. On the other, uh, if you're in good current form, you play anywhere. If the course form marries up, all well and good. Okay, what's your main tip, Glenn? Uh, I'm going for local Martin Keimer. To uh, get back in the uh, winner's enclosure. I've uh, been struggling a bit recently, obviously. Um, well, we're formal winner this event. Also finished second at Good Larschenhof last year when he came into the event in no real form, having missed three cuts in his previous four outings. Uh, this time around, uh, he comes back to Munich on the back of a couple of solid efforts. Obviously, third at Memorial, where he gave best on the final day to an inspired Patrick Cantlay and a 35th. 35th place finish in last week's third major. Uh, multiple tour winner. Uh, he's not been successful since 2014 in the US Open, but all the sides been there recently. It's just that Strout could soon be over. On no fewer than five occasions, he's ranked in top eight in greens in regulation. At the Memorial, was seventh in scrambling, second in putts for green in regulation. And at the British Masters, he was fourth in driving accuracy. Uh, comfortable playing in front of his home fans. Obviously, won this tournament in 2008. Also, won on the challenge to in 2006, the Vodacom Challenge. They also, finishes a second, fourth, sixth, and eighth in Germany. Uh, as long as he had a good, uh, good week with the flat stick, um, I think Martin Drymer's, uh, Martin Keimer's drought could be over. Okay, Steve. Six more selections from you. I want rapid fire reasoning, please. Next best, Julian Suri, American powerhouse, one of the best players on the European tour. He was sidelined by a hernia operation, but returned to action at the end of March. Has been generally superb. Form figures of 24 to 19. No disgrace in missing the cut by a shot on the USPJ last time out. He's won in the Czech Republic on the Challenge Tour. He's won in Denmark on the European Tour. I can ride a perfect course cool set up for attacking sluggers like him. And then five more, all at massive prices. I mean, it won't cost you much to do this staking plan. I do my staking plans myself. I wouldn't put this staking plan forward if it wasn't viable. They're all enormous prices. Guido Migliosi, aggressive Italian. He won the Kenya Open in March, then the Belgium knockout last time out. I see no reason why he won't go close again uh, to a hat trick, a European tour hat trick, and an Eichen tried layout, which is made for his talents. Sean Crocker, similar player, fearless youngster, classy amateur, lost to uh, Bryson DeChambeau in the uh, semi finals of the 2015 US amateur. His pro career breezed through Challenge Tour, uh, quickly got promoted. Been threatening a European Tour breakthrough. Two Frenchmen, Romain Langasque, former amateur star, Challenge Tour winner, Q School graduate, knocking loudly at the door of the winner's enclosure on the European Tour. Sixth in Kenya, fifth in China, third in Denmark. He missed seven cuts in a row prior to teeing up at Eichen Ride as a rookie in 2017. Finished 31st. Two years later, like Detri, much more confident. Victor de Buisson, back to full fitness. Had a series of problems. His attitude is better than ever. It was never particularly taken by golf, but he sees it as a, as, a, as a job now. He's fully focused, featuring on leaderboards again, two-time tour champion, former Ryder Cup star, ready to win titles again. And then finally, the last one, Christopher Wrighton, uh, a different 21-year-old Norwegian was impressing the world at Pebble Beach last week. Victor Hovland finished 12th in the, at Pebble Beach last week in his final outing as an amateur. Wrighton is great friends with Hovland, former roommates, uh, bound to be inspired by Hovland's exploits. There was nothing between them when they were growing up. In fact, when Hovland got knocked out of the 2015 US Junior Championship, he caddied for Wrighton, who made it through to the latter stages. That's how close they are. They played each other in the last 16 of the U.S. Amateur Championship last year. And Hovland went, won that match and went on to win the whole thing. But Brighton's got a bright future as well. Um, he's the only amateur to, to come through European Tour Q School last year. Uh, he's made a steady start to life on the pro circuit. 10 under par for 54 holes in the Belgian knockout last time out. So, yeah, I thought Christopher Wrighton was being dismissed too easily by the layers this week. OK, <clears throat> Steve, put the scattergun down. Glenn, tell us who else you're putting up apart from Kamer. Well, thankfully, uh, Steve's done a lot of work there for me. My second tip this week is also Guido Migliozzi. I agree with everything Steve said there. Uh, we know he's got immense power. He displayed that in the Belgian knockout. I want to throw in onto that as well, the fact that three times in his last five events, he's finished in the top seven in putts for green in regulation. 
to suggest this guy isn't just all about power. Once he gets on the greens, he knows what to do. Uh, a few of the greens have been sorted uh, this this week. Uh, more undulations and that, so hopefully his putting skills will come to the fore. And also in the Belgian knockout, he was second in greens in regulation and first in scrambling, so he has got a short game. Um, yeah, he could indeed add his third to the title this season. And I want to throw one more into the mix. I did say a few weeks ago, I think he could be ready to win again. Bern Wiesberger, obviously successful in the Made in Denmark. Um, he also played in the Belgian knockout. I didn't think it looked such a strong event at the time, but I'm pulling a few out of it. After looking like he's missing the cut and feeling his uh, wrist injury a little bit, he shot an amazing seven under par in the second round to get through to the match play part of the tournament. And then he just went on a birdie fest. Uh, saw off a couple of opponents quite quickly before he ran into Migliozzi. Um, so obviously both in good form. Uh, formerly ranked, ranked world number 23 and I think ran this venue this week, big hit in again. Uh, I think he put in a prominent showing. Well done, chap. Some excellent cases there on both tournaments. I'm definitely going to get involved on plenty of these selections. Let's just sum up who the lads are tipping this week. We'll start with the Travellers Championship. Steve Palmer. Patrick Cartley, Daniel Berger. Glenn Day. Uh, Bubba Watson, Paul Casey, Ben Ann and Ryan Moore. OK, the BMW International. Deep breath, Steve Palmer. Thomas Detry, Julian Suri, Guido Migliozzi, Sean Crocker, Romain Langas, Victor De Buisson, Christopher Wrighton. Five of them, 60 to 1 or bigger. Lovely stuff. And Glenn. Uh, Martin Keimer, Guido Migliozzi and Bernd Wiesberger. And finally, if you are only having one golf bet this week, what would it be, Steve? I would have the Cartley Detry each way double. If you really want to destroy the bookmakers, the Berger Wrighton each way double. That was 20,000 to one last night. <laughs> <laughs> and Glenn. Yeah, I'm having each way double, Keimer and Watson. Lovely stuff. What does the rest of the week hold, Steve? Grafting away, anything nice? In, uh, working every day until the open now. <coughs> We've got a new book coming out. Do you know about that? The Betting Guide. Um, no, you I know didn't. about that? No, no, no. no. A new, new betting guide coming out this summer. So, uh, well, a yeah, golf a betting guide or an open uh, betting guide? Uh, uh, racing and sports betting, yeah. It's in the formative stages, but I think it's coming out at some point this summer. Blimey, it's all happening since I took over. All these fresh ideas and <laughs> brilliant innovations. That's good stuff, isn't it? Um, okay, so you're just grafting, really, Steve, yeah? Very much so, John. All right, and Glenn, what about you? All work and no play? Uh, no, a bit of play, but not one I'm particularly looking forward to, unfortunately. Tonight, I've been recalled to our Super League darts team. Uh, been totally out of form recently. Self-imposed exile, but with a few guys on holiday now, I've been told I've uh, got to get the old arrows out again. So, oh, wow. Yeah. wow. What, what, what sort of stuff. gram of arrow do you throw? A 26 or...? Uh, 22. 22. Most, yeah, mostly. Uh, mostly throw that these days. <laughs> And, um, and where's that <laughs> taking place, mate? Uh, then the local in Ringma, uh, the Green Man. The in Green Man in Ringma. So if you want to see Glenn Day playing darts, which I'm sure is a lifelong ambition, get yourselves <laughs> down there. Who do you support, Glenn? Football. Yeah. Yeah, Manchester City. Do you? I do. A lifelong fan of that. Yeah, going back to the days of uh, Colin Bell and Mike Summerby and all those. So. Excellent. A lot of suffering before the last few years. Yeah, oh, that's good, isn't it? So, are you in the Sussex Blues? We've got a colleague called Nick Barnes who's in the Sussex Light Blues. There's a group of Sussex-based Man City fans, so you might want to hook right. up with him. Well, funny enough, there are quite a few. In the Green Man in Ringba, there are, I think, four or five Man City fans, basically. So, yeah, well Barnes. supported. Excellent stuff. Brilliant. Right, thank you very much indeed, chaps. We're back next week with another Golf Postcast looking into the the Rocket Mortgage Classic. I'm not sure I'd want a mortgage with Rocket with a company called Rocket Mortgage. Is that what the interest rate does if you get behind with your payments? Anyway, what did that used to be called, Steve? That's a new one. That is in, in Detroit. It's a new tournament. A totally new thing. It's not like the old yeah. chem. No, or no, 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 no. It's a new one. Okay, so we've got the Rocket Mortgage Classic and the Andalusia Masters. Is that Valderrama, Steve? Very much so, yeah. Oh, yeah, wow, yeah, that'll yeah. be good. Lovely stuff. I'd I had a friend of mine play there the other day and give me the give me the um, the lowdown on the course setup. So uh, yeah, I'm uh, excited about that one. Superb. Well, Glenn and Steve will be back for that, and we've got Royal Ascot postcasts every day this week. So do join us for them. If not, we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Good morning.